Welcome everyone to Calm Your Anxiety. I'm excited to be with you today as we spend the next bit of time together to talk about how to calm and reduce symptoms of anxiety, stress, and overwhelm using natural approaches and therapies and um, options that are safe and effective. So if we haven't met, I absolutely love supporting people who are motivated to treat their anxiety and mental health holistically. I'm motivated to help you remove unnecessary stress and anxiety from your life without the added pressure of prescription medication. My name is Jen Broyles, and I'm a former pharmaceutical sales rep turned holistic health coach. Six years ago, when I pursued all of the conventional avenues to heal my body and came up empty handed, I was forced to look elsewhere. And the first place I started was nutrition. From there, my eyes were open to the world of functional medicine and integrative medicine, which I didn't even know existed before that point. It was the avenue I had been searching for, and I returned to school to study integrative nutrition and left my career in pharma. You know, starting in my early 20s, I was exposed to many pharmaceutical band-aids, I like to call them, um, including antidepressants and anti-anxiety meds, birth control, among others. And I'm off all of those now, thankfully, but it wasn't easy and they left residual symptoms that I've had to work through. And that's why I'm so passionate to offer alternative therapies to consider as a first-line treatment option as opposed to going straight to drugs. Now, if you have any questions during our time together, um, definitely make note of them, and then I would love for you to reach out and contact me. I'd love to help you out. So let's talk about the fundamentals of anxiety or anxiety 101. You know, for those of you accustomed to dealing with anxiety, it'll likely come as no surprise to you to know that it is one of the most commonly experienced mental illnesses among adults in America, affecting over 40 million adults a year or 18% of the population. That's substantial. Yet the interesting thing about this is that only 36% of those suffering seek treatment at all. So this tells us a few things. One of the things is that anxiety is an issue um, that's not always taken seriously enough by those who don't suffer to correctly assist those who do. And another is that there must be some issues surrounding the actual treatment that is being recommended. So if you or someone you love has ever been prescribed drugs to help you fight anxiety, you'll know that medication only has varying levels of success in combating the symptoms. For some people, it has positive results. For others, it simply doesn't work. And that's fine for the small percentage who do see results, but what about those who don't? And what about those who experience the negative side effects of some of these drugs? 65% of anxiety sufferers in America currently take prescribed drugs daily, and 43% of them take them regularly. It's interesting to consider this large percentage of people who take the prescriptions, given that the statistics also show that only 10% of those who suffer are receiving adequate treatment. It's also a little concerning to consider that out of all the people struggling with anxiety, and actually receiving medication that such a low percentage is effective at all. This only strengthens the suggestion that the solution is probably not pharmaceutically based, or at the very least, that anxiety drugs are not for everyone. So let's talk about some other options. Holistic health, and that's the area that that I specialize in as a holistic health coach is becoming increasingly popular as the rise of wealthy globalized pharmaceutical companies continues to dominate the medical industry. This dissatisfaction with modern medical care is not the only reason for the surge in interest. You know, as with any ideas worth spreading, the concept of treating imbalances and disease such as anxiety with natural holistic methods 
is something that comes with a firm, reliable basis and also dates back thousands of years. But what exactly is holistic healthcare? Well, holistic healthcare takes into account all of the varying aspects of life and the individual as potential causes and remedies to disease. So this means that all aspects of physical, mental, emotional, social, and spiritual health, which contribute to the overall well-being of the individual. You know, as so much of modern day healthcare focuses on attacking the illness or just focusing on one symptom, as opposed to creating overall health, holistic healthcare can be viewed as an overall, more wholesome approach to creating and sustaining better health. There are very few imbalances of the body and mind that cannot be treated with holistic remedies. And so those who suffer from anxiety are no exception. As awareness of mental health issues like anxiety continues to spread, experts from around the world have begun to study the benefits of enlisting holistic health measures to combat it instead of the addictive lure of prescription drugs. So let's talk about food for a minute. And as I just discussed previously, when we look at holistic health, we, we are looking at various components of lifestyle, diet being one of them. And so one of the dominant contributing factors to optimum health, which holistic healthcare deals with and which I work with clients on is diet. So eating foods which promote a healthy body and mind while also taking into account individual lifestyle and activity factors is key to achieving balance in both physical and mental health. And in terms of anxiety, there are certain foods which both accentuate and relieve the symptoms of anxiety. And depending on the severity of these symptoms and the person's physical health, I wanna share some specific foods to assist with relieving the symptoms of anxiety. So first of all, some foods that tend to increase the severity of anxiety include caffeine, refined sugar, hydrogenated oils, fast food, high sodium foods, trans fats, processed foods, soy, and alcohol. And I'm sure this comes as no surprise to you um, that it's a lot of the sugary, processed, refined foods that don't serve our bodies that can contribute to imbalances such as anxiety. And you know, some of these foods might be more obvious than others, you know, foods such as refined sugar, trans fats, hydrogenated oils. Those can sometimes be difficult to identify unless it's specified on the packaging. So it's best to avoid the food chosen if there's any hint of uncertainty. And a good rule of thumb is to focus on whole foods rather than packaged and processed foods. All right, so let's talk about what to eat. So I know the list of what not to eat might rule out a lot, <laughs> seemingly a lot, especially in our standard American diet, it's most of the foods that tend to be consumed, but there's a lot of foods that are great for the body and that are great for um, stress and mood management. So let's talk about what to eat, okay? It is possible to eat a healthy, balanced diet, which also will lend itself to a calm state of mind. So foods such as root vegetables contain vital grounding and soothing properties that help ease the effects of cortisol and other stress-related hormones, as well as foods rich in B vitamins and antioxidants and omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids are vital for our brains to function properly and regulate hormone release. So wild salmon, walnuts, flaxseed, chia seeds are just some examples of this. Other foods which are known to benefit the symptoms of anxiety include blueberries, almonds, spinach, broccoli, spirulina, raspberries, dark chocolate, quinoa, red lentils. And this is not an exclusive list. There's many more. And many of these foods also fall into the category of superfoods, a term we've become very accustomed to lately and hearing it often in the health and wellness world today. 
Superfoods are simply foods which contain higher levels of beneficial nutrients, minerals, vitamins, antioxidants in direct proportion to their composition. So they're an excellent natural source of anxiety reducing nutrients. And so this is a great place to start. But again, at a high level, simply focusing on whole fresh foods, um, focusing on a lot of items from the produce section in the grocery store, your fruits and vegetables, you know, and then a lot of healthy fats, right? In the form of essential fatty acids that we talked about, you know, the omega-3s, but also healthy fats in general, like coconut oil and avocados, nuts and seeds, um, olive oil, things like that as well. So B vitamins are some of the most happy hormone inducing nutrients of all. So eating foods rich in these vitamins will assist with the relief of anxiety. So examples are green vegetables such as asparagus, spinach, avocados, are just some of the foods that you can include in your diet to start combating the effects of those high levels of cortisol. B vitamins and folate can also be found in beef, pork, chicken, leafy greens, legumes, oranges, and other citrus fruits, rice, nuts, and eggs. And the effects of B vitamins varies on the extremity of the anxiety. Someone who experiences acute anxiety may not have as much success with B vitamins as someone who only has a milder form, but it's definitely worth trying. And to have a few go-to um, B vitamin supplement brands, and I definitely have my preferred brands of um, supplements that that have wonderful formulations of B complex supplements that give you a variety of the B vitamins in optimal forms um, and optimal amounts. So I'm happy to help you out with that. But even before the supplements, and again, sometimes we need supplements to bring our nutrient levels back up to where they are if you're nutrient deficient, but not necessarily all the time, right? But always start with with food and a good quality whole food multivitamin that's going to have B vitamins as part of that. That's one of the things I always recommend is getting that high quality whole food multivitamin and mineral is going to have good levels of B vitamins in them already in a whole food form. And then if you need to add to that, you can. Now B vitamins are water soluble. They occur in eight forms, B1, 2, 3, 5 through 7, B and B9 through 12. And they're necessary for proper brain function and some signs that you might be deficient in B vitamins includes the following, fatigue, headaches, nervousness, irritability, anxiety, cramps, tingling in hands and feet, and nausea. So if you, if you do find yourself experiencing some of these symptoms on a regular basis, it's definitely worth looking into perhaps some micronutrient testing or adrenal testing or even you know, implementing more foods with higher concentrations of B vitamins and a good quality whole food supplement with B vitamins in them and see how some of these symptoms resolve over time. All right, let's look also at traditional Chinese medicine. You know, as more and more medical schools and practices begin to integrate the emphasis on mind-body connection, and holistic medicine, um, the age-old practice of traditional Chinese medicine remains one of the most deeply rooted and effective traditions in medicinal history. The origin of many holistic remedies and treatments that we now have in the Western world comes directly from the examples set by the ancient Chinese herbalists who relied on nature and their understandings of the human body and mind to both prevent and cure diseases. Their focus on the prevention of the onset of disease is where we see the effects most directly. You know, many stories of herbalists and medicine men living well past the average life expectancy of their era have followed herbally supplemented and longevity boosting lifestyles as a testament to the power of these natural remedies. So taking responsibility and interest in your health and your lifestyle changes is a paramount element of holistic healthcare because so much of it is extremely personal and tailored 
to your individual needs. And this is why it's so important for you to cultivate awareness of your own individual needs during treatment. And this is what really any holistic professional, including myself, is going to ask of you. So stemming from traditional Chinese medicinal methods of healing and prevention, there's many strains of herbs and remedies that lend themselves to consumption in the form of tea. Um, I, I imagine many of you are familiar with different formulations of herbal tea and green tea, and there's just a variety out there. And tea leaves have been broadly acknowledged around the world as one of the most effective natural remedies for fighting signs of stress and anxiety. And the beautiful thing about this kind of treatment against symptoms of anxiety is that the effects can be felt almost immediately and the herbs are so readily available. One of the most best, one of the best reasons to enlist the help of herbs such as chamomile in the treatment of illness or disease is that unlike modern medicinal treatments, there is no toxic fallout, right? There's no toxic overload after the body has finished processing the benefits of the tea. So herbs such as chamomile and lavender that have specific healing and soothing qualities means that drinking water infused with these leaves can have almost immediate and lasting effects on anxiety. The natural stress relievers have been used as remedies and recipes for centuries all over the world and they're widely available in the form of tea leaves. Chamomile preparations are also used for many other common ailments such as hay fever, inflammation, muscle spasms, menstrual disorders, insomnia, ulcers, wounds, GI disorders, rheumatic pain, and hemorrhoids. And so implementing these solutions in the form of tea is such an easy and simple and enjoyable way to get the benefits of these medicinal herbs um, in a very easy to consume format. Peppermint is another great one. It's a readily available herb which lends itself to soothing the effects of stress and anxiety. And in the form of herbs or oil, it can be used in many different ways. And consuming peppermint tea when stressed or before bed is a great way to immediately calm the nervous system and prepare it for a state of calm. This menthol base is a natural muscle relaxant, and so it promotes the physical sensations that are required to relax the body and even prepare it for sleep. So teas such as peppermint, chamomile, lavender, these are herbal teas. They contain no caffeine, and so they're much more preferable to coffee for soothing the effects of anxiety. Peppermint is also great in that it, it assists with digestion and headaches, can really help create a cooling effect, which can counteract the heated fear associated with panic attacks. Peppermint is also a natural energizer and promotes clear skin and clear sinuses, which also just easing those types of symptoms can aid with easing anxiety. And you know, if you know me, <laughs> then you know that I am a huge fan of essential oils. And I will often use the pure essential oil in place of the herb because it's more potent. And it's also super easy to use. And it's a great way to simply make a tea with essential oil. So you can literally add a drop of a pure therapeutic grade oil to water or to an herbal tea for enhanced benefit. Um, so peppermint, for example, you could add a drop to warm water or to an herbal tea preparation that you already have, right? Or you could even add a drop of Roman chamomile to your herbal tea for added benefit. And of course, as always with essential oils, if you're using them internally, make sure you're using a reputable brand that is approved for internal use. So always read the label, that's really, really important. So of course, when we talk about anxiety and just you know your feelings and your emotions in general, your environment is going to play a role. You know, the place where you live, where you work, the people you surround yourself with, 
can definitely be contributing factors to heightened levels of anxiety. And the trouble is that many people who struggle with anxiety neglect to consider their environment as a factor to their suffering. And it becomes increasingly easy to blame themselves as opposed to the actual external contributing factors. And it's really not even about blame at all. It's about setting healthy boundaries. And in order to lower the effects of anxiety, the environment you're in must promote a healthy, positive attitude toward yourself, your work, and your relationships. So it makes sense that what we experience externally will impact our inner environment, our happiness, our thoughts, our emotions, and how we process it. So for this reason, lighter, brighter, cleaner, more open spaces are shown to improve symptoms of anxiety. As people in Western countries spend an increasing amount of time indoors, especially during colder months, the importance of positive environments is only accentuated. And I, I personally recommend spending more time outdoors and in nature as much as possible to combat anxiety. Just being outdoors in general, being in nature, there's been so many studies showing the benefits of being out in nature, going for walks in nature is truly therapeutic and stress reducing, but also being outside in the sun um, is really, really therapeutic as well and gives your body the vitamin D it needs um, to support the body and can really help um, reduce symptoms of anxiety in that regard too. It's been proven that stress levels can rise in unpleasant environments which don't lend themselves to our emotional comfort. And so this calls into question the environment in which you live, where you work, and where you interact with others. It's vital that these elements be completely in balance and in line with your requirements to maximize your mental health and productivity. You know, think about it. If you don't feel good, if you don't feel comfortable or valued in your environment, how are you supposed to function to the height of your potential? How are you expected to do your best work or be the best version of you and feel at home in your own skin while doing so? So I encourage you to really evaluate your environment and all areas of your life and the people that you surround yourself with and see if some of those things could potentially be contributing to your levels of anxiety and what you can do to either find peace with where you're at or change your environment and your surroundings. And of course, essential oils. One of my favorite tools to use for anxiety is essential oils. Um, this is one tool that I find to have an immediate benefit. Diffusing essential oils can assist with creating a more positive, calm-inducing and anxiety-soothing home environment. Pure therapeutic-grade essential oils such as lavender, peppermint, chamomile, ylang ylang, citrus oils, and many more are known to have positive effects on those under stress or suffering from anxiety. So it's a really good idea to have them on hand when you're at home to combat any unwanted episodes. Essential oils contain tiny aromatic molecules which can pass through the olfactory system, they can pass through the blood-brain barrier and have a direct impact on your limbic system and provide an instantaneous effect on those areas of the brain that are associated with stress, anxiety, panic, and even depression. Lavender in particular is known to um, really affect the, the central nervous system directly and really help calm it down. And the central nervous system is associated with sensations of intense anxiety and stress if it's overactive or if it's in that fight or flight mode, right? So lavender um, is known to really impact that directly and help calm down your central nervous system. Essential oils are also very versatile and can be used in numerous ways from diffusion to incorporating into your skin and hair care routine. And even some oils um, have benefit adding them to food and beverages. And I have a number of resources on my website to enable you to get creative with your oils. And the Effects and uses are just as broad. So if you want to learn more, definitely check out my website because um, I've got an abundance of resources. And depending on the need of the person using it, the oil can promote different effects and target different problem areas of your mind and body. So a few ways to use essential oils. 
inhale them directly. So rub one to two drops in cupped palms and take a long, deep breath, and you'll feel the effects immediately. Rub them directly. So rub one to two drops of oil into your temples, your wrist, your chest for full body relaxation. Use them on the go. So put a few drops on a handkerchief or a cotton pad or on a scarf and inhale as needed. And you'll really get that instant calming support throughout your day. Add them to your shower, you guys. This is a great, great way to use them. So, I mean, just immerse yourself in an essential oil steam by adding a couple drops of essential oil in your shower. And also use a diffuser. Diffusing essential oils for emotional Support is one of the best ways to get this benefit. And so to get this long lasting benefit, add four to six drops of essential oil to a diffuser and have your diffuser running throughout the day. Now, it's important to note that over 85% of oils on the market are adulterated and compromised quality. So make sure you're using a high quality brand if you're using it for therapeutic and medicinal purposes, you don't want to sacrifice um, the quality that you're using and be disappointed in the results. So I use and recommend doTERRA because they are the most tested and the most trusted on the market. And if that's something you want further information on, feel free to email me or visit my website. All right, let's talk about physical activity. You know, it doesn't have to be a holistic health specialist that tells you that exercise and staying active is ex an extremely effective way of preventing the onset of many illnesses, not just anxiety and depression. The holistic way of approaching healthcare focuses not only on the period of recovery after an illness, but on the lifestyle as a whole during periods of wellness too. And the more integrated the holistic measures during these periods, the more optimized they become, and the higher the level of overall health you can expect to experience. Exercise is thought to be one of the most invigorating and effective ways to combat periods of anxiety, stress, or depression, as the endorphins produced after even a short 10-minute walk have similar effects to taking aspirin for a headache. Exercise has been proven scientifically to elevate moods and more physically active people also show lower instances of anxiety and depression. There have been countless studies done for both holistic and scientific purposes to investigate the effects of physical activity on the brain, all of which conclude that even moderate to light exercise is vital for optimum functioning and balanced moods. So whether it's yoga, running, climbing, weightlifting, swimming, or hiking, the effects of moving your body and engaging in physical exercise are unlike anything else for achieving stress and anxiety relief. The best way to find an activity that suits you is to simply try them. See what works for you and your lifestyle and what you can realistically incorporate into your everyday life. And again, if you know me, you know I'm going to talk about gut health, right? <laughs> so this is, in super, this is super important because the gut-brain connection is so, so strongly linked. If you've ever experienced digestive problems, you know how uncomfortable and stress-inducing it can be. It can render you incapable of focusing on any other task. It can make you irritable and anxious to be around. And this is only when it happens once in a while. Imagine if it happened every day after every meal. For anyone who suffers from chronic GI issues, you might be familiar with what I'm talking about. And even if you don't have GI issues, most people have experienced the discomfort, the negative emotions, and the bad moods that can result from a period of digestive distress. And that's why it's no surprise to learn that the gut, that the gut brain connection and gut health overall has significant parallels to our mental state. And this has even been shown to be true in several studies that, um, that have been published over the years. The gut brain connection is strongly linked. The theory is that gut bacteria are intricately 
linked with our brain via the nervous system, spinal cord, hormones, and the immune system. The vagus nerve, which you might be familiar with, is the main contributor between these, and it transmits neurotransmitters from the base of the spine, which is conveniently located near the gut, to your brain. And additionally, the majority of serotonin, which is your feel-good neurotransmitter, is produced in the gut. So if your gut's not functioning, you might not be producing adequate amounts of serotonin, which is going to contribute to more symptoms of anxiety and depression. And this is important because it further supports the facts, which holistic healthcare has promoted for centuries, that what you put into your body truly does affect the way your mind works and the feelings of positivity and negativity that we experience. It supports the theories surrounding certain foods and their benefits or disadvantage of promoting happiness and decreasing anxiety. There's endless benefits to this understanding, mainly being that it gives us a better idea of which foods to eat, to expect a larger surge of positive emotions, or at the very least, which foods to avoid to ensure we don't experience any negative emotions. Fibrous foods and those with nutrients that are easily absorbed by the digestive tract are at the top of the list, while those with a denser composition tend to rank lower. All right, let's talk about flow state and creativity and how that can be a great anxiety reliever as well. So what is flow state? Flow state is somewhat of a new term that has been coined to define a state of intense creative and productive focus where the person slips into an undistracted state of intense concentration while completing a task. And the importance of flow state can be measured on both a personal level, you know, how much you focus can affect how you feel fulfilled by your work or other flow activity, and also on overall health and well-being. And neuroscience has proven that those who engage in flow state more regularly have overall higher levels of happiness and a sense of balance in life. So finding your flow is a great way to ensure that your mood and your sense of clarity don't dip too low, which helps you avoid anxiety and stress and maintain productivity levels at their highest. And it can also help you escape a bout of anxiety, even though doing so might prove slightly more difficult. But some suggestions to help you find your flow include reading a book. The simple act of reading a book has nowadays even been adapted to screen time as Kindles and phone, phone apps take over. But regardless, reading increases our ability to focus. And another principle of flow state is that the more we engage with it, the easier it becomes to access. And next is notice, notice when you are at your most focused and productive state and take note of the following. What is it that you're doing? Who are you with? What environment are you in? What have your activity levels been like? What have your recent eating habits been like? And how would you rate your overall mood, satisfaction, and anxiety levels? Although flow state is by no means exclusive to those who work in a creative field, it has been observed that a large percentage of those who suffer from acute anxiety are actually highly creative people. And this would suggest that anxious energy is simply an excess of creative energy and potential that lack a direction. Um, and that lack of direction has caused to manifest as stress. So if that's true, it could be a case of redirecting this energy solely toward the task at hand and not allowing anxious thoughts to drive awareness elsewhere. Much like training your mind to read, to study, or to focus on any task you must complete, a flow state takes consistent and repeated engagement to become easier. So don't worry if it doesn't come immediately, just be sure to notice when it does. And when it does, again, pay attention to what it is that you're doing at that time and perhaps do more of it. Yoga and meditation, of course, is another great natural therapy. 
you know, these are both activities which have been proven to improve and assist in accessing our flow state. By consistently engaging your body and mind into a state of internal focus and concentration in the form of physical postures, which are asanas, mindful breathing techniques such as pranayama, and directing awareness to thoughts and emotions as they arise, which we know as meditation and mindfulness, you can begin to access a state of mind-body harmony and awareness. This focus and awareness, when it's sustained over some time, is ultimately a prime example of how the human mind is in a state of flow. So yoga and meditation are also hugely beneficial in combating symptoms of anxiety and stress. By promoting a sense of ease and well-being within your body and mind, Yoga and meditation succeed in reducing the intensity of cortisol and other anxiety-related hormones, and also give you tools to use against the onset of them in future times of struggle. And while many Western yoga classes today focus primarily on the physical aspect of the practice, and I feel like these days you see a lot of power yoga and intense yoga trainings, that's not necessarily what I'm talking about here. The physical fitness, which is attainable by practicing the asanas, is only a part of what makes yoga so beneficial. When, when you practice yoga properly with awareness and mindful breathing and attention to the body's individual needs, yoga and meditation can promote a sense of mental fitness too. So you combine mental fitness with physical activities and consistent levels of sustained focus, and you have a powerful holistic tool to use against anxiety. Now we're almost finished and I just wanna ask you, how are you feeling at this point? I know there's been a great deal of information in today's webinar and um, I hope that you're enjoying all of it. And um, I want you to start thinking about what is the first thing that you're going to try. Now, before we wrap up, I would just like to take this opportunity to thank you for attending, and I really hope that you like the information and resources that were shared and that they'll be of benefit to you. And if you're looking for further help and support, I'd love to share a couple of options with you. First is my free Breaking the Stress Habit Guide and my Dangers of Chronic Stress three-part video series. And this, the, the guide is free, um, and the video series typically sells for $50, but I'm offering it um, to this group for just $19.99. So if you go to jenbroils.com backslash self-care-guide, then you can get your free guide, and then you'll also receive information on the video series if that's something that you want to take advantage of. Okay. And if you're wanting more personalized one-on-one -on -one support, then I invite you to check out my health coaching packages um, on my website, jimbroils.com. And I even have a one-time 30-minute strategy session for new clients. That's a great way to get started. And, um, and so again, thank you so much for our time together today. I am going to take a quick second to show you where you can find this information. So if that's something you're interested in, just sit tight and I'm gonna show you. Otherwise, you've got my email address here, my website, and my Instagram handle. I would love to connect with you. And now let me take a second to um, here we go. So if you go to jenbroils.com backslash self-care guide and you see the dashes in between. Just click on this button, yes, send me the guide. You'll enter your email address. You'll get the free guide delivered directly to your email. And you'll also be directed to a page that will give you information on the three-part video series if you choose to take part in that. Again, limited time only. It is discounted to $19.99, so great time to take advantage of that. Um, and then, of course, you can visit my website for more information on um, 
any of any of the stuff that we talked about, first of all, my blog has a ton of resources, but then also if you want to learn more about my health coaching services, you can click on that link and read about all of that here. So again, thank you for attending today and I look forward to talking to you again soon in the future. All right. Bye for now.